Okay, so this is our uh, day of notes over solving exponential equations with same bases. So the same base rule is fun. You're going to love it. Marcos. Because you get to cross stuff off of your math problem. I find that people love crossing things off. That's like, they're like, whoo, to cross things off. Um, when you have the same base, you're allowed to cancel the base, cross it off, and then you just solve the exponents. Um, and we do this when you have a variable exponent. So I want to solve for an unknown exponent. So my goal is to get the bases the same, and then I can cross them off, I cancel the bases, and I solve the exponents. So these bases are both 200, they're already the same. And you get to cross them off. And then I just write what the exponents are. So x equals 7. And that's my answer. Thanks. Catherine, this is for you. So when, when we're done with notes, this is when convenient. There you go. Counselor. OK, so sometimes the, when the bases aren't the same, we have to rewrite the problem in a way to make them the same. So on example 7, it says 5 to the power of x equals 125. Well, the base of this is 5, but I have to try to rewrite the number 125 with a base of 5, so I, I have, will have the same basis. So if you take 5 and multiply it by itself, what power would it be so that it would equal 125? The third. Good. So if I take 5 and raise it to the third power, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, I'm really not changing that 125. Now my bases are both 5, so I'm allowed to cancel the matching bases, and then I can just solve the exponents. me. So sometimes you have to rewrite. Sometimes you'll rewrite one side and sometimes you have to rewrite both sides. Uh, sometimes you can't rewrite in order to get the same base, but that'll be what we do in our log unit. I'll teach you how to use um, the log properties to rewrite it. But today in this unit you should be able to write everything with the same base. So let's look at number eight. I've got 10 to the power of x plus 9 equals 1,000 to the power of x plus 1. I need to get those bases the same. So I would look at the smaller number. Can I rewrite 1,000 with a base of 10? Hmm? Perfect. He said 10 cubed. So 10 to the third power is the same exact thing as 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10. So I have my power of 3. I have to keep this exponent that's on the outside. So I'm replacing the 1,000 with 10 to the third. And I have to keep that little x plus 1 exponent. On the left-hand side, it already has a base of 10. Okay, so what do I do next now that I have matching bases? I get to cancel or cross off those base 10s, and I'm left with x plus 9 equals, when I have this power of 3 raised to another power, we're going to distribute, we're going to multiply. So a power raised to a power, you multiply. So this will become 3 times x and 3 times 1. Make sure you distribute through that second number. The errors when I was walking around, I caught people like, I was like, oh, you're, you're off because you didn't distribute through the whole expression. So make sure you take that, when you distribute that number, you distribute it through both terms, x and 1. So now, I don't know why I put that parenthesis there. Let's take that off. There we go. So now we're just going to solve the exponent. So how would you guys solve that? What would you do? Subtract, subtract the 3. Okay, we could subtract the 3. 
And that leaves me with x plus 6 equals 3x. And then what would you do to solve for x? Subtract the x. Good. So we've got our numbers together. Now we're getting our x's together. That leaves you with 6 equals 3x minus x's, 2x. And then what would you do? Divide by 2. Good. And so x is equal to 3. Okay, so on that one we rewrote one side. Sometimes you rewrite one side, sometimes you have to rewrite two sides, both sides. Okay, let's look at this one. This one's a little bit interesting. You'll see this um, example on a couple of problems on your assignment. Your assignment's nice today. It has a little answer bank. Um, it's unique because it has an x squared in the exponent. So how we solve it is going to be a little bit different. So first I want to get the same base. The smaller base is 7. So take your calculator and 7 and raise 7 until you find out what power of 7 we can replace 343 with. Is it the third power? 7 raised to the third power is 343. And I have to keep that little x that's on the outside there. And then I have equal 7 to the power of x squared minus 10. What do you do next? Yeah, you're going to have to distribute the 3. We get to cancel those bases. And we're going to distribute the 3. Oops. That was a weird color. 3 times x. So that gives us 3x on this side equals, and then we bring down, there's nothing to distribute, your x squared minus 10. What, now, so look at what we have. Why is that one a little bit different because of the squared? You're going to have to factor it. Yeah, good. It's a quadratic equation. So before you factor it, what do you have to do? You want to set it equal to 0, and you want to move the 3x because you always want to have whatever ax squared is, you want that to be a positive number. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be hard to factor, so don't do that. So, yeah, move the 3x over. We have x squared minus 3x minus 10. When you, when you move it over, you want to write it in standard form and put it in order. ax squared plus bx plus c before you try to factor it. So now we're just going to factor with one of those little cross puzzles. What would you put on the top? Yep. What multiplies to 1 times negative 10? What goes on the bottom? The middle. And so what numbers multiply to make negative 10 but add to make negative 3? Okay, 5 and 2. And you all said the 5 is negative. So now we're going to write our factors. I'm so glad, like, to hear you talk about factoring. Like, you're just like, I feel like I got it. You know, you must sound like you're bored with factoring, which means you're really good at it. So that's cool. Am I done? I have the factors. It asked me to solve, though, right? So I need solutions. How do you get the solutions to factors? Good. So... He said he's looking at insider's lie, so my solutions are positive 5 and negative 2. Or sometimes when y'all show your work, you take that factor, take each factor, set it equal to 0, and, the, and then you solve for x. Okay, and some of you just think, okay, insider's lie. Inside parentheses, um, it's lying about its side. So whichever way, either set it equal to 0 or change its side. Okay, so on a problem like this, it has two answers. And you'll have that happen on your worksheet, like I think two or th maybe three times. Okay, so these are probably the weirdest looking ones, but they're still not all that bad. Um, what base do you think we're going to use if you see 7 and 49 in a problem? We're going to use a base of 7, good. How can you make 49 out of 7? What power of 7 is equal to 49? You, you're, it's squared, right? So first, I'm, good to, I'm just going to rewrite it as 1 over 7 squared. Okay? But I don't want that fraction. I want to put 7 to the power of 
positive 2 in the top. And you can do that, but you have to change its exponent. What would its, ex what would its exponent look like? Very good. It's happy in the bottom, and so most of the time we tell you get rid of your negative exponents, but I want to move it to the top, so I'm going to make it unhappy. Okay? So when I put it on the top, the exponent becomes negative, and I'm left with x equals negative 2. So when you see fractions, that's probably what you're going to do. You're going to move the denominator to the top and change the exponent to a negative number. Okay, when you see decimals, I think the easiest thing to do is to take that decimal and rewrite it as a fraction. Do you guys know what 0.25 is? Very good. 1 over 4. Your calculator will do that too. Just hit math and then type in the decimal and um, use math fraction, enter, enter. Okay, so now it's a lot like the problem above it. I want to rewrite them. What base could I make them um, the same? I could use a 4, right? But I have to get the 4 out of the bottom of that fraction. So right now it says 1 over 4 to the power of positive 1. But I want it to be in the top. So if I move it to the top, what happens to the power? Good. It becomes negative. So it's happy here, but I need to put it in the top, so it's going to be negative 1, and then x minus 6. So now my bases are the same, and then you just have to distribute. So I have x equals, and this will be negative 1 times x, so negative x, and then negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. Now what do you do? You're going to solve for x, so... Yeah, add the x. It looks a little weird. I think people look at it and they're like, oh, the x is canceled. But they actually don't. When you add it, um, they're both positive on the left. So it looks like 2x equals 6. And then you just divide by the 2. And x is 3. I think at first glance you're like, wait, they're going to cancel out. But they don't when you add the x. Um, and then the last one that's kind of unique that uses our exponent rule that you haven't seen something like this uh, before is when you have a radical sign. So when you have a radical sign, they want you to remember that rule, that we can rewrite radical 3 as, a, as an exponent. So if I take that 3, what's its fractional exponent? It says the square root of 3 to the 1. Well, when it doesn't have an index or a root, what is it? It's a square. So if you need to, you can write that 2. It's a square root of 3 to the power of 1. So remember, I have my power and my root. What is the fractional exponent? Power on top, right? Root on the bottom. So that's my square root of 3. Remember that rule? Like the square root of x is equal to x to the 1 half power. Because it's the square root of x to the 1. Remember that rule? So you might have to use that. Whenever you see a radical sign, you're going to use that rule. And then you have to keep the 4x minus 10. Okay, on this side I need a base of 3. So how can I fix 27? How do we get 2? Because any time you see a radical sign without an index, it's assumed as the square root. If you had, uh, you know, a third root, it would be x to the one-third. Um, yes? Okay, ask me one more time. Say it one more time. Say your question one more time. Uh, well, the only time that we this would ever involve a negative is if that's in the bottom of a fraction. 
but it's not in the bottom of a fraction. And you, you, you might see something like that. I, I kind of doubt it because that might be kind of a difficult problem. But I could put 1 over the square root of 3. And so really that would be 1 over 3 to the 1 half. And so if I moved it to the top, it would be 3 to the negative 1 half. But this guy's not, there's no fraction. There's no fraction involved, so I don't have to worry about any negative exponents. I just need to use that rule where I take the power and root. So um, the root is 2, and the power, the 3 under there is just 1. And I use that, I rewrite that fractional exponent with the power on top and the root on the bottom. Absolutely. So um, how can I rewrite 27 with a base of 3? 3 to the 3rd. Good. So 3 to the 3rd and then the x. So now what do you do next? Good. Multiply the exponents. Cross off your same base. So 3 times x gives you 3x equals, and over here we have 1 half times 4x equals 2x. And then half of negative 10 is negative 5. So you want to get your x's together. Just subtract those x's. And it leaves you with x equals negative 5. So whenever you see a radical sign on your assignment, I would look back to that example. Whenever you see a decimal, look back to that example. And then the fraction, remember, you know, you're going to give it a negative exponent and move it to the top. So those are the only kind of unusual ones. Other than that, you just have to know the rule. Make the bases the same, cross off the bases, and you get to solve the exponents. And after you do that, you guys are really good at solving for x, so it's not too bad. What do you think? Do you have questions about this? Mm -mm. Okay, your assignment's kind of nice today. It has that, it has that little um, answer bank in the lower right-hand corner. So 